do you want to know how good the Kelpie product by Kelty Inks works? Then stay tuned, I've got all the info for you coming up. Good morning, welcome to my channel this morning. Um, if you haven't been here before, I'm all about alcohol inks and experimenting with different products with those and for those. So today I'm actually going to be um, demoing this product. It's called Kelpie. There's not actually a label on it, but it's called Kelpie and it's by um, Kelty Ink. So if you go online and Google them, um, they have all the alcohol inks you can imagine. All these are by Kelty and there's quite a selection of colors, which is really nice. But they also have this product called Kelpie and they claim that by putting it onto a fairly porous surface, it makes it less porous and um, supposedly it acts a little bit more like Yupo or uh, maybe the craft plastic or something like that. So today I'm going to experiment on one of these wooden panels and I love working on these. I actually usually mount my paintings on them. So this is an example of a painting that I did uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. So this is painted on Yupo paper and then I've mounted it onto the wooden panel just like this one. And um, But there's always a risk of getting like bubbles and bumps in it. Um, even when you use the really heavy weight Yupo, it's really difficult to get rid of. So it'd be really nice if I would be able to paint directly onto the wooden panel. Okay, so just to read through the instructions here, um, it does say to shake for 30 seconds to one minute, um, ensure surface to coat is free of oil and grease, apply Kelpie evenly, apply in uh, careful even strokes, taking care to work Kelpie into the surface, eliminating any foam that may form, um, and then allow it to dry completely for one hour-ish. Some surfaces may take longer. Apply a second coat if needed. Okay, so um, I, I did notice I have um, like played around with this just a little bit in terms of um, seeing what the, the substance was like, and it's it's very transparent so I think I'm going to do a coat of white first on top of my um, my wood and then I'll come in and paint this on there so probably don't need to shake that just yet I'm not quite ready for it so I'm just gonna use a little bit of gesso just to get a white base I think the inks look way better on a base like that rather than through the wood. I don't think you'll get the same intensity of colors um, if it's not on a white surface. I mean, it could be a whole different look, different technique. Um, so definitely depends on what you're after. But just so I can see the comparability to, I just wanna be able to see how it compares as much as possible to to Yupo. So I want to make sure I've got that nice white base on there. And I know some people use gesso as their as their base and they'll paint with the inks right on top of the gesso. I still find there's a little too much absorption for me. Um, the inks just don't move as nicely as I want them to. So I want to find something that imitates Yupo just that little bit better for me. Put way too much on here. I not get lots of lines in there. I don't want too much texture. I want to get it as smooth as I can. So maybe I'll find a bigger brush. Okay, can't find a uh, brush right now, so I'll just have to use this one. Try and brush out some of those 
lines or at least make them kind of go in different directions so I don't end up when I do my work I don't end up with tons of stripes in there and it's just more of a textured effect So at least I've got a nice white base now that when I put my inks onto it, when I've added the Kelpie, that it will show the clarity of the colors a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. I will come back in about 10 minutes and apply the Kelpie. So I will see you then. Hello. Okay, um, so it's been about 10, 15 minutes. Um, now I'm going to apply this... Um, Kelpie product, but I'm going to shake it up first. That has been a good minute. So I've tried to make sure that. Um, it is well mixed up like recommended so just getting a nice clean dry brush okay so let's see what this is like it's pretty fluid so we'll just start with a little bit and we try and apply it evenly so I'm trying to be um, methodical about it to make sure I get it evenly. I probably will do a second coat and I'll go in the opposite direction so that I get all the nooks and crannies nicely filled. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just going in one direction now. I'll let it dry and then I will come back and do a second coat going in the other direction. Okay, so I'm going to leave that now um, for an hour or two. Um, I may wait a little bit longer than what he recommended um, initially just because I want to make sure it's really, really dry. Um, and then I'll add my second coat. Then when I've done that, um, I will come back and we will do the inks together. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. I will be back. So it's been actually um, a full day since I first painted these. So I painted these, just as a reminder, with the Kelpie product. There's not actually a label on there, so no need to actually show you. But um, this product is supposed to make the surface similar to Yupo um, to make the inks run really smoothly. So I painted two coats onto my wooden canvas here. And I wanted to try just one coat. Um, this is just the canvas board. Um, so I, I didn't have another wooden panel to try, but I just thought I'd try with one, one coat on there just to see how that works. So I've got my inks ready today. Um, and I'm gonna be using the Kelty inks on them, um, mostly. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of detail with, um, I've got the uh, rose gold, and silver from the Ranger brand. So these are the mixatives, um, just to add a little bit of sparkle to the painting. Um, I will be wearing my mask, so I may speed up the video a little bit so you're not having to watch every single second of me paint. But here it goes. We're gonna start with the first, uh, with, one, with one coat on there.
Okay, so I didn't think to record this bit, but I didn't like the end piece that I had painted on this wood that you saw just previously. So I decided to see how well the ink came off the wood with uh, rubbing alcohol. And as you can see in the picture, it's actually coming off pretty good. And in this picture here, you see how clean it actually got. To me, it's pretty comparable to um, wiping off of a tile. The only thing was that it didn't um, quite get out of all the grooves of the wood, the, like the grains that run through it. But overall, I was very impressed and it meant that I could start afresh and um, do a new painting. So here we go. Okay, so with this painting, I used three colors, um, mostly just two though. Um, I start off with Purple Twilight from Tim Holtz range, and I start to introduce some of the denim. Um, my goal initially with most paintings that I do, and especially in this one, is more alcohol and less ink. I really, really spread out the colors as much as I can, and just use one blob or two of the ink and then lots of alcohol to move it around and get the two colors mixing and blending together. I'm using a lens blower to get the ink to move around and I have it at a fairly low angle, um, almost kind of parallel, maybe at like a 45 degree angle from the table um, to move the, the ink around. Um, as you can see, I'm just building up the colors. I keep going back in, sometimes adding more ink, but then trying to spread it around with the alcohol. And then you'll see a little bit later on as I get towards the edge of the, the painting where I want to leave some of it white, I really just thin it out with lots of alcohol and really get that nice soft wispy edge happening. So I'm gonna leave you with the video um, it is speeded up just so you're not having to sit here all day and watch me. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the box below. Um, as you can see, I'm just starting to add the current in there, but now I will let you watch. <laughs>
So there we go. There's the final result. This is a painting on a wooden surface uh, pre-treated with Kelpie. And I'm really pleased with the results. I think it came out really nice. Um, I think the ink flowed really well. And I was even pressed to get the spray bottle effect on there as well. It got the nice texture from using the spray, the little dots that happen. But I did want to do one more test and I wanted to use exactly the same colors as I just did on the Kelpie board and um, use those colors on Upo paper to just see and compare again the effects and how different it might be from the Upo because I'm a, a girl that loves Upo and mostly uses that for my work um, but it's nice to have that alternative where I don't have to glue down the Upo at the end of a really awesome painting risk ruining it or getting air bubbles and all that palaver so I just wanted to see how it compared so here we go here's me doing exactly the same technique it's now on Upo paper I will let you sit and watch and I will come back at the end and show you a close-up of both the paintings Okay, so here's a close-up of the two paintings I just completed. This first one, as you can see, is on the um, wooden canvas board that's been prepped with the Kelpie. And so it has a really good, um, good smooth finish to it. But you can see the grains of the wood, but I quite like that. 
um, compared to the Yupo over here. Obviously it's a little bit more smoother and I did find that there was a few more colors that came out of the inks when you thin them out versus um, on the um, the wood and also it came out a little bit brighter as you can see there when you put them on top of one another. Um, the Yupo is definitely a little bit more shiny but you could get away with just giving that uh, wooden one a nice spray varnish and I'm sure it would look pretty similar. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's giving you a good wide perspective of the Kelpie product and um, if you have any questions please put those in the comments below. Don't forget to click subscribe to watch new videos every week and click that bell button too. Okay we'll talk to you soon.